In this video, I'm going to be showing how to go about making a bone reduction guide and then a separate drilling guide. And so as you can see here, we've done the bone segmentation on both the upper and the lower jaw. And whenever I'm doing this and there's teeth present, I generally will like to go ahead and just use the cut tool, which is in the bottom right corner of the surfaces panel, and just simply cut out those teeth. Uh, it doesn't have to be a really detailed job, but for the next step, it makes things a little bit easier. And so the first step, once I've cut out the teeth, and again, I've not taken great care to do that super accurate, is that we're going to go to the guide panel and actually generate a surgical guide directly on this bone surface. Uh, so you can hit draw curve, you can um, draw this, and I will. I typically will overextend this. It's very easy to cut back. I do try to swoop up and over the mental foramen area, so I'm not impinging there. But even if you leave these borders long, they're very easy to cut back. Um, so I typically would rather have them too long than too short. So I'm just going around drawing the curve and then I will hit edit curve. This is where you can fine tune the positioning of the uh, guide perimeter by dragging the nodes wherever they need to be. And once you're generally pretty happy with where those are, uh, you can push create guide. Now it's worth noting that I don't have any guide tubes turned on and that's by design. So when this makes the guide, you're gonna notice that there are no guide tubes in it it more or less, uh, for lack of a better term, is going to look just like a, a mouth guard. It's going to be a, a uniform three millimeter piece of plastic just sitting over the mandible itself. And that's fine because we're going to end up cutting the top of that off anyways in order to generate the reduction guide. So I'm just finally um, getting everything where I want it on the perimeter of this guide. And once I have that where I want it, I can push create surgical guide. And as you can see, the software is going to go through the process of fabricating that. And again, this will just be a uniform three millimeter piece of plastic sitting directly on the bone. So this is what that looks like. And this is what we will cut the top off of to make the bone reduction guide. Now, when I make the cut for the bone reduction guide, it's important that you make the exact same cut going through both the jaw and that guide simultaneously. But if you use the cut tool, you're aware that you can only cut one surface at a time. So the easy fix to combine these is to just go to export data and I'm going to export both the jaw and the guide I just created simultaneously. Turn everything else off and I'm going to name this combined jaw and guide. Uh, what that does is when you export two surfaces simultaneously, it's going to turn them into a single STL. So I'm going to export this to my desktop and that's done. And now I'm going to immediately go right back and import that same surface. Okay. So the only point in doing that was to combine the surfaces into a single STL. That way, when I go and make the, um, the cut, it's going to cut through the, uh, uh, the guide making a bone reduction guide and through the jaw creating a reduced jaw simultaneously. So now you need to know where to make that cut. So I do that by turning on the guide tubes on the arch that I'm working on. As you can see here, I'm in the mandibular arch. And then I'm going to turn the translucency up on this combined model, which I just imported. That's important because I need to see where to make this cut. And where you want to do that is right in between the head of the implants and the bottom of the guide tube. Uh, I'm using the cut tool, which is in the bottom of the surfaces panel, and I just simply circle that area, and you're gonna see that that creates the bone cut and the bone reduction guide cut. Now, you'll notice that it just gave me a mesh cut failure, and this is not uncommon to happen when I do this. Um, what that means is that if I turn these implants off, you'll be able to see there's, there's a hole in the model. It's not, it's not watertight anymore. Um, as you can see, there's an area that you can just see straight down into the bottom of it right there. That's not a problem because I'm going to have to separate these back out in Mesh Mixer. And Mesh Mixer, it's very easy to repair that. So now I'm going to go back, export this again, now that that cut has been made. So I will name this uh, the same thing. I'll just replace the other file that I had. This is that combined jaw. And now let's open it up in Mesh Mixer. So first things first, we need to repair this. So go to analysis 
and do auto repair all. And as you see, it fills in those mesh cut failures. And now we need to separate these back into two surfaces. That's one function that Blue Sky Plan cannot do and that you still have to do in Mesh Mixer. So I simply go in, I select the entire mandible, I delete that, and that leaves me a reduction guide. Export this, name it reduction guide. Now you can just click back and, and reverse back to where you still had the mandible and then invert this. That will deselect the mandible and select everything other than the mandible. That leaves you the reduced jaw. Now export this. So now you have your two surfaces separated back into uh, two independent ones instead of joined together. So I don't need this model anymore. I just deleted that. And now I can import my reduced reduction guide as well as the reduced jaw. So I'll import these. Uh, there, when this screen comes up, you don't need to stitch this. When Blue Sky Plan saves STLs, it not only saves their shape, it saves their XYZ position, which means that as long as you don't mess with it out of the program and you don't attempt to restitch it, then it's going to pull it right back into the exact correct uh, XYZ position. Same goes for the mandible. I'm pulling that back in. I'm just canceling out of this matching teeth uh, window where it wants me to stitch it. And as you can see now, I've got the reduced jaw in the case and also the reduction guide. All right. And as you can see, the whole point of that exercise was to make sure that we had the exact same cut through both surfaces. And you can see that we've achieved that there. So this is the reduction guide. Now, once you've completed reduction, it becomes necessary to do a drilling guide. Now, there's multiple ways of approaching this. The simplest, I think, is to just make a separate drilling guide. So put this on, the jaw gets reduced, and you do that very accurately, and then you can take this reduction guide off, make a separate guide that you'll seat on there to do the drilling, and that guide will sit directly over this reduced jaw. So here you can see I'm gonna turn on the guide tubes again and turn off the reduction guide, and this time I'm gonna make the guide directly on this reduced jaw. So back to draw curve, we're going to draw the curve. Once that perimeter has been drawn, and again, I like to make this generous. I go uh, pretty far out with the borders of this because it's very easy to reduce later on. So continue that around. And of course you do want to stay over the mental framing, no point in impinging on that. And then edit the curve, fine tune the, the positioning of all these nodes, get them where you want them. Make sure it's a smooth flowing contour. And then you can push create surgical guide. And now the software is going to create our second guide, which is a drilling guide. So again, this, this technique that I'm showing in, in this particular video is two separate guides, reduction guide and then a drilling guide, which will fit on the jaw after it's been reduced. And so there you have it. This was um, a very simple process to do this. Uh, the only downside really to these bone guides is that you've got to make an enormous flap. I mean, you, you got to flap them down to their liver to get these things seated. Um, so typically it's nice to have these patients sedated. But once you've done that, this is a very helpful technique and uh, can, can yield very predictable results. And as you can see, super easy to do and also very affordable to do.